What's up everybody? Hello world. So I didn't have any time to edit a video for you guys today so I decided to go ahead go live and show you guys how I built this 20 gallon long rack for 20 of them. Kind of give you guys a quick walkthrough and you guys can ask some questions along the way about the stand and um yeah, so I'll show you a quick view on how I put it together real quick. So let me flip you guys over. What's up everybody? How's it going? Oh so yes, this holds 520 longs per each row. And there's four rows, so that's 520 longs. And they've all got eco-complete. And this is going to be for fish and shrimp. So I'm probably going to do Neos, Endlers, Neos, Endlers. These have a little bit of a gap between each other, so I can uh, keep endlers and shrimp next to each other because they more than likely not going to bridge over that. But for the ones that are tied up to each other, it's uh, best to go endler, shrimp, endler. That way you don't have any mixing or hybridization that you don't want or because you really don't want to taint another line with another shrimp or vice versa an inler jump into another tank as far as the lights I have LEDs these are the cheap eBay ones I think they are aqua neat and let's see I think they were like 30 or 40 bucks so I've got two of them on all these rows the top one I need a longer one to reach to that really well because it's so high so I still gotta figure that out but I just got the air pumps done and just really pretty much done with it for now for a while so I wanted to share with you guys and as far as the lights they're all plugged in down here I got two power strips and the one's on a timer one's not on a timer and I've wrapped my cords around here so there won't be any issue with water. Say if there was any flow, overflow here, it wouldn't get into the power strip because of the way that the power cords actually are. Kind of hard to see. It actually lined down and then lined to the bottom. Which in hindsight, I kind of thought I could put it up here, but it would look like a mess. And also, usually what I'll do with my racks is I'll take one of these tanks out and leave space for those. But I didn't this time because I really wanted all these tanks. And as far as the air filter, I have these Tetra Whispers. These are made for uh, 100 gallons. That's these Whispers. And so one of them will do two rows, so one for each outlet. But yeah, I just wanted to make a quick video of you guys for you guys uh, doing this. Actually, what I need to do next is I'm going to get some water out of this uh, rainbow fish tank here. Since it's nice and seasoned. And go ahead and dump at least a pitcher full in each one of them to uh, get the cycle going a little faster. Because I get impatient with the cycle. Now I have learned one thing. That you can't cycle soft water and hard water as like a jump starter. I have learned that the hard way. So that is one thing to keep in mind. If you're going to try to jump start a cycle. Use hard water if you got hard water in the tank. Vice versa. If that's soft water, use soft water. Because for some reason I think the bacteria is different. Just the way it holds and everything. Nice frag bait. That's hilarious. Do you know how to raise alkalinity without raising hardness? I have crushed coral in the tank already. Uh, airstone will raise alkalinity. Which would be your pH. Let's see here. What are some good pond fish? Uh, we gotta keep the questions towards the rack. I'm not gonna be on here very long because I've actually got a lot to do. I just pretty much wanted to make some, where am I? Why can't I see myself? Oh, I haven't flipped you guys over. Hold on a second.
get some content out for you guys and actually give you a video because I told you guys I'd have a video for you this Sunday and uh, I didn't have a chance. Are you sleeping at all? No, not much because I had the bomb dropped on me that I'm only going to get like half the time. I'm getting half the time I have cut to get stuff done and I've really got to figure that out like what's the next step but I mean it's out of my control what can I do so I'm trying to do the things I can just to keep the garden growing and leave the big thing to well I still got to do big things but anyways it's it's some transitioning and yeah I wanted to hop on here and let you guys know oh and I'll show you guys how I do all these uh all it is this is a gang valve gang check valve what's up bob steam font everybody ruru too shimmy Dwayne, all you guys but um yeah this is a gang check valve five of them for each and it's actually all of them are actually turned different so you do just want to i try to just balance the airflow so it's nice and even because for some reason these uh air stones they'll all work differently so all the valves are checked differently, but it's pretty easy. It's just running lines, and I hooked them up. I use these pipe hooks. These are plumbers will use these to hold PVC up. And I actually use that to keep my lines nice and organized. And when I cut these into the sponge filter, I like to keep that tight. That way it's not real loose, the lines are nice and tight, they're going to stay up there, they have less chance of flopping over. I actually need to go back on my other stands and do this with. So the more, the more I actually do this, the more I learn about how doing them more efficiently too. And these are deli cup lids that uh, deflect the air bubbles from splashing and jumping tank to tank. I'm actually testing a few different types of lids out for this, but yeah, I'm starting to get a uh, bad connection here. Real bad connection. Hopefully it kicks back on for you guys. Hello everyone. Is it going? Is it going? I don't know. It's not chatting with you guys, so... Wish I had carpentry skills. I can't cut anything straight. Well, get you a, a miter saw. Those things are pretty much dummy proof anymore, Ruru too. Yeah, you need a chop saw. Can't figure out jelly. Da, 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 da. Do you have an actual job, Lucas? This is my job. Actually, I worked construction for like 12 years plus and always did this on the side, but like two years ago, I really decided to do this full time and uh yeah so i'm running with it what filters are those these are just like corner air sponge filters I'll show you let me see well i kind of see it here see how it's triangle it's like one of those triangular corner sponge filters i pretty much bury it just as like a filler for the substrate And yeah, I mean it works great for a filler. I get more depth elsewhere for plants. Like plants don't grow great on top of it, but you put the right plants there, you can. And more, most of these are just going to be with moss. Yeah, this has always been my dream job as well because I've always wanted to do it. Like I grew up with tanks and stuff like that, and like 12 years ago, I figured out you could put plants in them and create your own environments. And that's what really hooked me big time. And I was like, the only way to do it is like an aquarium. But with social media now, I mean, I just gather good stock. Always kept in mind what a hobbyist would expect when getting something. I think that is very important. Very important. And yeah, I just ran with it. I feel very blessed I can do it. But it was a big leap of faith to do it because... I didn't have anything saved up. It actually happened because my son was being born and it was like either hire daycare or stay at home, watch him. So I stayed at home. I already had quite a few fish tanks and I decided to just make it work for me. But that's not what this video is really about. And yeah, it's about the substrate. How deep is your 
uh, it's about to stand. How deep is your substrate? It's, uh, I would say about two inches. It kind of varies. As you see, I haven't really sm smoothed it out much. And that's mostly because it's going to have moss in it, mostly crypts. Like, the shrimp will be mostly moss. And the endlers will be mostly, like, stems and crypts and stuff. The children exasperated your MTS. Actually, it actually, uh, made it go more full-blown, which is not the usual. Hey, Lucas, do you run any cells on your shrimp? I do. I have a website, lrbaquatics.com. A lot of them are sold out right now because they're kind of growing out. Like, everybody's been waiting on these blue dreams. And, uh, they're growing. Just wanted to show you guys that, too. They're growing. Got some pregos. What are the lights using? Once again, those are the cheap, like, Fowler ones you get off eBay for, like, 30, 40 bucks. Alright. So, last questions. About the stand, if you're... If you're I think I covered pretty much most everything here, so I think that actually should do it. Because I want to kind of keep this video short, too, for people who want to watch it later. They don't have to go through a whole hour or half hour of footage because I know everybody, there's a lot to watch out there. But the black substrate, that's eco-complete. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you all for stopping by in the chat. Also, I'm going to take you guys along with this and try to answer some of your questions on it until let's see I'll have a video for you hopefully on Wednesday I mean regardless yeah I'll have something for you on Wednesday I'll hop on live again if I don't have anything edited or whatever and as usual Fridays 930 will be the actual Q&A what are your plans for stocking mostly gonna be endlers guppies and uh, let's see mosses shrimp and some stems and some crips Alright, until next time everybody, peace.